<clears throat> so this is my koi pond. And uh, right now I've got about 10 or so koi in here. And it's a constant battle to uh, protect the koi from all the predators, uh, mainly snakes and herons. And this uh, spring I've taken two uh, large diamondback water snakes out of the pond and relocated them. And there's primarily three different kinds of snakes that I find here in the pond. There's a banded water snake. There's a plain bellied water snake. And there's the diamondback water snake. And as far as predation, I find that the diamondback water snakes are more likely to catch one of these koi. So, uh, so I keep my eyes out when I see a, a larger snake, something, you know, in the three foot plus range, I'll generally try to snatch it, relocate it. And uh, this year I actually found one of them right over there. I got that one somewhat documented. It was a diamondback water snake with a big lump in it that turned in, out to be one of my recently released koi. And then, uh, on Mother's Day, back at that end of the pond, I caught a pretty large water snake. And after I released him, I came back and kind of did a head count of the koi, and it looked like maybe one of the koi was missing. It still appears that way. So anyway, it's a it's a challenge, um, and I may be fighting against the principles of nature. <laughs> By trying to have these koi here, but if they can get big enough, they can uh, avoid a lot of the snake predation and they have to get pretty large to no longer present themselves as a meal to the blue herons. But uh, at any rate, I enjoy the koi, it's very peaceful out here. Drop a little feed down, and in addition to the koi, there's some bluegill and some catfish, some turtles. So uh, it's a peaceful little spot. I enjoy it. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and put this together and uh, show a couple of the capture and relocation of the two uh, diamondback water snakes from earlier this year. I hope you enjoy it. So I've been out working in the yard today and I came across a crime scene. And I. Uh, I caught the perpetrator red-handed and unfortunately was not able to revive the victim. Uh, a little backstory: a few days ago I put some of my koi that I've been raising in a tank into my koi pond uh, to replenish the population there. I got wiped out by uh, blue herons last year so I had no koi in it so I decided I'd reintroduce some of my koi and uh, they've been doing good for a couple days, but today, as I was walking around the pond doing yard work, I noticed, uh, well, I'll show you. <laughs> the, 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 the criminal. So here's the criminal. It's a uh, diamondback water snake. 
close to three feet long. And uh, <laughs> the, the evidence was that he had a big bulge right up here by his neck. And uh, there was a goldfish tail sticking out of his mouth. So I, I dove off the bank of the pond, into the pond, and was able to catch him and encouraged him to regurgitate the koi. And unfortunately, the koi was deceased and I was unable to revive it. I dove off into the pond and caught the snake right there and made him regurgitate the koi, but it was too late. And uh, it's one of my one of my white koi, and uh, he's long gone, and uh, and it just makes me sad. But so uh, guilty, uh, caught red-handed, but. Uh, I can't blame him, he was just doing what snakes do. So uh, what I'll do is I'll cut him some slack. I'm gonna relocate him. I'm gonna put him through the uh, witness uh, relocation program, take him a couple miles away, let him go in a little coolie, and uh, hopefully he won't uh, come back and bother me and my koi. All right, the uh, perpetrator is getting a stay of execution, but I brought him out to the, what I call the train station <laughs> so he's fixing to get let off at the train station let this old boy out koi eater and he won't uh, he won't be back to bother my koi there he goes he's gone so there's my koi pond it's Mother's Day and uh, there's quite a large downback water snake down in there. I'm not even certain if you can see it or not. It's right in there. Right in there. I'm gonna jump down there and see if I can catch it. It's see pretty him. big. Yeah, I see him. So I'm gonna hand the Carol the, the, the camera to Carol and hopefully she can film the capture. What I, my plan is to go ahead and catch him and uh, put him in a bucket and, and take him to a place where he won't be a, a hazard to somebody's koi, right honey? Right. Okay, so there you go. Big and strong, too. Oh, yeah. I don't want to hurt himself. Yeah. He's crapping all over the place. Poor thing. All right. He's Here big. He is big. Uh oh. Come on, fella. Stop. Stop it. Of course, he can't hear me. So, this is a koi eater. <laughs> For sure, he may already have a koi in him. I know I had my 10 koi yesterday, so I'll have to do a count to see if I have my koi. But uh, just a big, heavy diamondback water snake. He's uh, musked all over me. You see that diamondback pattern? Kind of the white belly. And. Uh, of course, they look huge when they're down in there, as thick as they are. This one's three and a half feet long, Carol? Probably. Three and a half feet. Yeah. So 40 inches. I mean, it's thick. Yeah. So we'll put it in the bucket and relocate it, and maybe we've we maybe saved the snake and saved the koi. What do you think? Probably so. Okay. Nobody else would catch and release this guy. <laughs> Okay, 15 minutes ago, this guy was in my koi pond, but uh, 
we basically rescued him and we rescued the koi. And Carol and I have made a few trips to this little spot before. It's a <laughs> very snaky habitat. So we're going to go ahead and uh, release him. <laughs> there he goes. He's gone. <laughs> to his new home. All right. Howdy, howdy. All right, good deed, hon. We're done.